Professor Richard Falk describes himself as an American Jew, but it's his support of Palestinian rights that's earned him the profile and the abuse that's threatening to overshadow five decades of achievement as a lawyer, an academic, and an author. Even before he was appointed as the UN Special Rapporteur on Occupied Palestine, before he called the situation in Gaza a narrative of massive suffering, Falk had earned the undying enmity of Israel, which calls him malicious and unbalanced. One year on from Israel's assault on Gaza, I spoke to Richard Falk at length about his views, the impact of the Obama presidency, and the future of the peace process. I began by asking him for his reaction to the Goldstone Report. I think even the Goldstone Report accepts a misleading uh, Israeli narrative as far as the initiation of the Gaza War of December uh, 2008 is concerned. It, it limits its inquiry to the excessive disproportionate use of force by Israel undertaking its defense, the targeting of civilians, civilian targets, or what they object to. But they accept the major, in my view, false premise that uh, Israel had to act in its own defense and that it had no diplomatic alternative to recourse to this massive uh, violence against an essentially uh, defenseless uh, Gaza Strip. Comments like that you have made in the past, the Goldstone report in itself, even though it doesn't go as far as you have done, has also been attacked by uh, the Israeli uh, organizations that consider it to be anti-Semitic, the suggestion that somehow anything that you say in favor of the Palestinians is necessarily an anti-Semitic comment against the Jewish state is, is, seems to be fairly commonplace now. Is there a framework for debate that is actually viable in that context? Well, to the extent that kind of uh, dismissal of the substance of the argument uh, is uh, taken uh, seriously in prominent places, it does make debate uh, virtually impossible. Israel has tended all along to pursue what I call the politics of deflection, trying to uh, focus attention on either the messenger or the auspices, so whether it's Goldstone or myself or uh, the UN or the Human Rights Council, and not, uh, not deal with the substance of the allegations, not deal with the criticisms that have been leveled against its tactics and policies from the perspective of international humanitarian law. As I've often said, you c Israel could not find a more sympathetic, internationally credible figure than Richard Goldstone to conduct a fact-finding mission. And yet they've attacked him in this way that has tried to uh, defame his personal uh, credibility as a uh, trustworthy uh, reporter of the facts and the law. The Arab media and the general perception in the Arab world among Middle Eastern commentators appears to have decided that the Cairo momentum is gone and what Obama promised in Cairo was illusory. Uh, and increasingly in the English language media, the, a number of voices who are beginning to conclude the same thing. Do you think that President Obama has failed or at least um, has lost the momentum that he generated in Cairo? Yes, I, I, I do think uh, that the, there's very little foundation any longer to think uh, that the Obama presidency was either intending or capable of producing a new approach to the Israel-Palestine uh, uh, conflict, or even more concretely, was prepared to exert significant leverage on Israel to take a kind of uh, position that could lead to fruitful peace negotiations. See, I would have felt more comfortable if Obama had made as a precondition for the 
resumption of the peace process, lifting the blockade on Gaza, because that is imposing a daily ordeal on a civilian population. And the U.S. has been complicit in this uh, dynamic of denying the people of Gaza uh, food, fuel, and medicine for now more than two years. It's an intolerable human situation, and the U.S has allowed that to go on without any serious challenge being directed at Israel. Not just the U.S., but the international community appears to have accepted that as a, as a, a reasonable response by Israel to what they perceive as a threat. Why is that? Well, I think it, it's, a, it's certainly deeply unfortunate. I think it was uh, a way of indicating a certain post-9-11 solidarity with the U.S. whenever the a uh, political actor was designated to be a terrorist organization. I think that's what uh, induced the European Union to uh, go along with this uh, hardline uh, Bush and Tel Aviv uh, diplomacy. The reality of the situation is that Hamas was encouraged to participate in the Gaza elections. It won them fairly in an internationally monitored election after it uh, acquired uh, power it proposed and maintained a one-year uh, ceasefire in which israel continued to assassinate its leaders and it went along with this uh, ceasefire that egypt negotiated in 2008 that basically cut the cross-border violence almost to zero and so hamas's actual record as a political actor since it won those elections in Gaza would seem to make it appear that it wants to be accepted as a political actor and that it will engage in uh, nonviolent diplomacy as a way of pursuing its own goals. It seems to me that something else needs to happen at this stage, not only because of the tremendous amount of desire to see something happen, but also because of the way the Netanyahu government appears to be playing President Obama. This latest announcement of 900 new settlements appears to be a deliberately provocative act, once again trying to move the framework, the goalposts of the entire conversation. And President Obama ha has, in a way, laid himself open to accusations that he has lost the battle against Netanyahu. I think that that's correct. Uh, it's 900 housing units, not 900 settlements, right. uh, but that's bad enough. Um, and it is um, a repudiation also of the uh, Palestinian Authority. It, one should understand that. The Palestinian Authority, I think, was prepared to go along with a rather bad uh, set of prospects to accommodate this Obama initiative. But now uh, the Israeli government has so clearly uh, signaled its unwillingness to create an atmosphere where the Palestinian Authority can enter negotiations without feeling completely delegitimized. Uh, so this, in some ways, uh, Mahmoud Abbas is the biggest casualty of this diploma, this failed Obama diplomacy, at least to date. Is he a casualty or is he a cause? Because you've spoken in the past of the inadequacy of the Palestinian leadership. It, it is inadequate, and I think uh, Palestinian representation at the global level has been a uh, severe handicap to the pursuit of Palestinian self-determination and the like. At the same time, uh, to the extent that there is any sort of uh, diluted legitimacy to the Palestinian Authority, uh, that seems to have been tested both by the uh, pressure exerted on the PA to uh, withdraw their resolution at Geneva on the Goldstone Report, and then to go along with this um, uh, supposed negotiation despite Israeli uh, defiance 
on the settlement issue uh, put uh, uh, or at least awakened uh, the Palestinian Authority and Abbas to the untenability of playing this game if he wants to survive either politically or uh, f even physically. So it's, it, I do believe that... Are you suggesting that he's a target? That, well, he, he, I think, has tried to redeem his tentative or partial legitimacy by renewing the resolution on the Goldstone Report, pushing forward with that in the General Assembly, and uh, by indicating his own intention not to run for re-election. But uh, you, just, you just said his position physically. I wondered whether you think he's under threat. Well, I think if he were to swallow the uh, East Jerusalem uh, expansion of the Gilo uh, settlement and uh, acted as if uh, Israel was a reasonable partner for peace negotiations. I do think the fury in the Palestinian and maybe wider Arab world would be of such a character as to uh, in danger. I didn't really mean to speculate in that in inflammatory way. Talk to Al Jazeera will be back in just a couple of moments with Richard Falk and his thoughts on the future of occupied Palestine. <laughs>